This is Scott Sonstegard with the Isaac Walton League of Detroit Lakes. And here we're at the 2022 EV event at the First Lutheran Church. We're learning all about alternative energies and being more energy efficient. So if you look in here behind me today, you can see that we have the electronic bikes. We got many different electronic vehicles that you can test drive. We've got also Swanson's here with some electric power tools. So it's going to be really a fun event. We've got lots of people here. So it's a good, fun uh, come and drive and test drive these new vehicles for energy and for the future. I want to say this is sponsored by the Detroit Lakes Utilities. It's also uh, sponsored by uh, Lake Region Electric Co-op, Otter Tail Power, and Wild Rice Electric. We've got quite a group of different people involved in energy that are here today. So we're going to be going around here and looking at the different vehicles in just a second. So stay with us. Hi, my name is Tyler Fix. I'm here with Weber Motors in Detroit Lakes. Uh, we've got our Ford Lightning down here, uh, 2022 model, uh, extended range XLT. Uh, it's going to be the talk of the show. All right, it's a beautiful looking vehicle. Boy, I would look good in that vehicle. So maybe a little bit later we'll, we'll take a ride. Anything else about the vehicle you can tell us that you think makes it uh, above the best? Uh, Ford product, extended range battery, you got your front trunk on it, uh, all the GPS, bells and whistles, uh, basically your Ford, Ford battery, can't go wrong with that. Fantastic, I'm looking in here, if we could read them, we can look inside here. This is a front trunk. Well this is nice to put your groceries in, you drive it into your garage, I can see uh, opening the door to the house, I can grab the groceries out of there and bring them right into the house, so that would be, that's pretty slick. And how many miles does this get on a charge? 320 miles. 320 miles. Yep. Wow. 320 miles. This is extended range. So. Boy, that's fantastic. All right, this is a 22 F-150 Ford Lightning. We've got the extended range battery in this edition. This is just the XLT model, so it's a little more basic than, than a few, but it does have quite a few bells and whistles. Heated seats, heated steering wheel. Uh, 320 mile range of battery uh, is, the, is the rating for it. Kind of gives a little false rating if you're driving a little different, but 300 to 320 miles. Um, it does have regenerative braking on it, so when I am braking at stop signs, stop lights, stuff like that, uh, we are gaining a little bit of a charge as we're going, which is a cool feature. Uh, the little four or five mile loop that we've been driving we've only been using about two miles of range of the battery vehicles built with a onboard generator as well uh, it can power a house um, up to a week 10 days kind of depending on how you're dispersing the energy so yeah, once we get around this corner, uh, we'll punch it down at 0 to 60 in just right around 4 seconds. Uh, it's just insanely fast. It's, I don't understand it. I'm back here at the EV event and why don't you tell us a little bit about your vehicle? Yeah, we just bought this vehicle uh, back in May and we absolutely love it. Uh, it cost us less than $3 to fill up. Before we were spending about $1,200 a month in gas. And now uh, with the cost of the vehicle and filling it up, it really uh, saves us a lot of money as a family. So Well, that's we fantastic. It. Okay, so how do you charge it? Where is the charging yeah, port so on right this? Up here. I'll show you. Right up here, if you can get a shot of that, there's the two level charger, oh. which is the top one. Yep, this is the two level charger. And you just flip this guy down here and you got your level three charger, which that will charge the car to 80% in about 50 minutes. 50 minutes? Yes. Wow. So we absolutely love it. God, thank you for that. Yeah. that that's, that's a fantastic testimonial. Yeah. So, all right. I warned this gentleman a little bit earlier. He's from Otter Tail Power, correct? Yep. Tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us about your vehicle that's here today. Yeah, so our vehicle down here is a 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E. Um, it's got a, at 100% charge, it has 270 miles of range. Um, so we brought it down here 
um, to the event. Uh, we've had it for a little bit over a year, have a little bit over 10,000 miles of range on it, or odometer miles on it. Um, no, it's been great. It's part of our fleet, so any of our employees can take it to um, different meetings or different events uh, throughout our service territory. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and take a look at it here for a second. Let me sneak by you here, sir. Let me sneak by you. Want to just open the door up here and give us a little bit of a... Wow, that looks awful nice. I'll be taking this home tonight with me. Okay, I'm going to talk to Candace here. She's with the Lakes E-Bikes. Candace, tell us a little bit about yourself and what's so great about these e-bikes. I'm also with Lake Region Electric Cooperative and we also have another partnership with our Bike Guide Radio over there. And e-bikes are great because they're beneficial electrification. So they are really great utensil and any Lake Region members and anybody at the EV Expo can come and check them out and take them for a test drive today. Fantastic. Let's just see the gentleman here. Your name is? Terry. Terry? Terry, let's see you drive one of those. And what do you think? Oops, I didn't put that up. Yep, there right, you go. It's way back there. Uh, it's very nice on hills. Okay. Riding around on the hills uh, allows you to get out and ride on days you wouldn't otherwise Fantastic. with the wind and such. Fantastic. We'll just see you take it for a run. Okay. This is Paul Douglas here. We're going to ask Paul some questions. Paul's our main speaker here at the EV event today. And Paul is a meteorologist with the WCCO. Been there for many years. And he's been, I watched you on TV many, many times and on the radio. So I'm really honored to be interviewing you. We just got done with a book study on your Creation Care book. And uh, what's happened since the book was published? Do you have any updates or what's happened lately? My, uh, my partner, my co-author, Mitch Hescox, who's a former Methodist minister, um, is amazing. And he does lobbying in Washington, D.C., and he's gotten this in the hands of a lot of people who shall remain nameless, but a lot of Republicans have read the book, supposedly. Yeah. And is it, is it moving the dial? I don't know. It's good to be skeptical. I sense, over the last few years, a little bit less skepticism. More people are keeping an open mind and connecting the dots. Doesn't matter what your politics is, the atmosphere doesn't care. Yeah. The atmosphere just re responds to what's happening with emissions. And we've doubled the amount of uh, CO2 and methane in the atmosphere in the last 150 years. Twice as much up there. Yeah. And so we're seeing more weather weirding uh, the floods are consistently worse when it dries out, and drought is natural, it's a natural yeah. process, but it seems like the droughts are accelerating faster. We're seeing more of this weather weirding, and so I think a lot of people are connecting the dots for themselves and uh, saying, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing it to appease any politician. I'm doing it for my kids. Yeah. I'm doing it for my grandkids. We have an obligation. I'm a Christian. Uh, I have strong faith, and I'm doing it for my grandson, who's two and a half, Jordan, yeah. and um, all the other grandkids out there, because our actions have consequences, and our inaction has consequences. If we sit on our hands and say, oh, it's all politics, it's not politics. Boy, well, thank you for coming today and speaking, and at 11 o'clock, that's what you'd be talking about, yeah. is the climate change and uh, what's happening, and maybe as people what we can do to slow it down and one thing i guess would be to buy a vehicle like this so we're putting less carbon yep. into the atmosphere right absolutely yeah and, and look i'm hopeful every threat is an opportunity we have to change some things and that leaves people uneasy anytime you talk about change right yeah. why should i get an electric vehicle i have one of these we actually have two electric vehicles those are our daily drivers okay and we're saving money Wow. I'm spending about a third to a quarter per mile to get around. We still have a gas-powered vehicle, and I'm not going to demonize the fossil fuel industry. They got us to where we are today, okay. but the path is unsustainable. We need to find cleaner ways to keep the lights on and get from point A to point B. I have some range anxiety. We still have a gas-powered vehicle for our road trips. We love to drive. We take a lot of road trips, 
but at some point in the next five to 10 years, there will be as many chargers as there are gas pumps. Wow. And, and that range anxiety is going to go down. I have about 300 miles of range in my electric vehicle. When that gets up to 500 miles and people can charge up in 10 or 15 minutes, then suddenly all the concerns go away, especially if you can save money. Yeah. If you can save money and do something great for God's creation, it's a, it's a no-brainer. It's a win-win. Why wouldn't you consider that? Yeah. So more and more people, I think, are keeping an open mind. There's still skepticism, and I get that. But I think that skepticism will fade away as people realize we can have everything we want and need with a lighter footprint on the only home we have right. and for our kids and for our grandkids so they don't have to deal with chronic drought and flood and crazy weather uh, patterns. So I'm hopeful. Yeah. I'm optim optimistic, Scott. Yeah, I am too. So thank you for your coming today and speaking at our at First Lutheran Church and our Creation Care team. And thank you for being a big part of this. And thank you for everything you do for the environment because uh, God only gave us one earth. So we have to take care of it. We sure do. Okay. And it was a good excuse to see Detroit Lakes. I love coming up here. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, so I'm here with Ryan Swanson from Swanson's Equipment, and he's going to talk a little bit about some of the tools and equipment he has that are all powered by electricity. Hi. Uh, well, A, thanks for having this event, you know, and gives us the opportunity to show the stuff off. So the one thing that, you know, we're seeing in today's time is, um, you know, the gas is changing and stuff like that. So our gas is not keeping our, we can't leave our chainsaw sitting on our shelf for over the winter or stuff, and, and then we're having this maintenance cost. Maintenance is increasing, you know, shop rates are going up, stuff like that. So it's in today's time, it's easy to have a $100 bill every time you bring your chainsaw in for any type of repair. With the battery powered stuff, you you eliminate that. You know, if, if you have your chainsaw sitting on the shelf and you don't use it for a year or two years, when you go to use it, you charge your battery up, you're re ready to rock and roll. So that's really being more... Um, accessible for the homeowner and the people that want that need to use it when they need to use it um, you know like steel now has this combi tool so this combi tool is a can you hear me or not oh steel has a combi tool so what this is is this is one tool and then you can change out your heads so when we plug this in we can go from this um, we got a, a big heavy duty uh, more of a brush cutter type head um, we can go into the sweeper, we can go into a limbing saw, um, we can pretty much do any type of the attachment that steel has. I mean, they have tillers for them, they have all that stuff. You can all do it through the one, the one head and battery power. So you're not having to go to the gas station, you're not having to get your mix oil, you're not having to do it, you know, any of that stuff. If you get the wrong gas, get 87 octane in about 30 days, that, that will actually varnish the carburetors up. You've eliminated all of that stuff, and it's ready to use when you want it. So, And you have stuff from all different seasons. We've got lawnmowers, you've got chainsaws, and down at the end, uh, something that we're all starting to think about, electric-powered snowblowers. Yeah, so the you know the, the bigger snowblower is actually was new last year. Um, Toro didn't send any, any uh, out until pretty much late in the season, so we don't really have uh, customer feedback yet on them. But we've already had some customers come in and, and trade in their, their gas power snowblowers for the electric power two-stage snowblowers, and they're excited for this winter. I mean, it's one way to get excited for winter is get a new snowblower. So. That's right. And the Toro system, you can use that battery on other Toro products, right? So Correct. Yeah. Yes. And, and same with the steel stuff. If you stay in the same system, um, you so like this battery here, this works in the chainsaw, this works in this battery pack system because that the battery pack runs the combi tool it works in the lawnmower so this one battery will work in all of these same machines same with the Toro the battery lets in the the big snowblower um, will work in the lawnmower so that that way if you have a lawnmower in your batteries when lawn mowing season is done you're not just letting those batteries sit you're continuing to use them you know because obviously like everything we keep our stuff charged and we're actually reusing it it, we get better life out of yeah, it. So. Well, thank you, Ryan. Uh, so if you're looking to get some lawn or snow removal equipment, go check out Swanson's and they can hook you up with some battery powered equipment and save some money and, and uh, save some money on maintenance as well. Thank you. Thank you.
you. Have a great day.